Hello, I'm Dr. Clarice Floyd, and I am so excited that you've joined us today for Wisdom for Success. It'll be a program that will be dealing with how to successfully reinvent yourself. These are changing times, and the greater the change, the greater the reward. Dr. Clarice Fluid is an internationally recognized supernatural life coach. She is a time-proven prophetess with laser-like accuracy. It's never too early and it's never too late for you to achieve your dream. Reports of amazing miracles and healings occur in her meetings. For more than four decades, she has a distinguished worldwide reputation as a Christian mentor. There are those who desire the benefit of success, but they choose not to embrace change. Her experiences as a mentor, life coach, coach, and enterprising businesswoman allow her to share her proven strategies for building the kingdom, inspiring individuals, and generating sustainable growth. If you want to do new things, I encourage you to invest in yourself. She has shared the stage with some of the world's most influential pioneers, including Steve Forbes, Les Brown, Susie Orman, Patricia King, Joan Hunter, Cindy Jacobs, Shaquille O'Neal, and many more. Welcome to Wisdom for Success with Dr. Clarice Fluid. You know, today, as we begin to talk about reinventing ourselves, you think, what are you talking about? Well, I'm telling you, everything in the world is changing. We've been through a pandemic. We've been through so many different things. Education is changing. Politics are changing. Life is changing. And in the midst of that, you and I have got to embrace some change, too. You know, I was thinking about St. Paul and the great change that he had. He was just so brilliant, and he was so uh, full of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And then he has this supernatural experience and meets Jesus. And everything you talk about change, he had a metamorphosis going on. And that as he began to walk with the Lord, he realized it wasn't just one change. It wasn't just two changes or three changes. We began our walk with God. And he, as long as you're drawing breath here, God is saying, we're changing. We're going from glory to glory not gory to gory. We're not stopping. We're not saying, well, I had a hard time and I just, I'm mad. I'm not going to do this. No, you're not going to do this. This is what Paul said. And it helped me when I began to read what he said. If it worked for him, I believe it might possibly work for you and me. Take a look with me to Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Beloved, I've found in my walk with God that there are some scriptures that really, really, they become yours by reason of use. They become those wonderful anchors that you just say, wait a minute, this is what the Word of God says. Let me read it to you. Brethren, now that means men and women. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Now what's he talking about? I've not yet gotten to where ultimately God has called me to be. I've not apprehended what I've been apprehended for, but this one thing I do, this is my contribution to the changing process, to the reinvention, forgetting those things which are behind, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before me. He doesn't know what they are, but he's reaching forth. He is saying, I'm pressing on. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I ask the Lord, what is the high calling? That high calling, I believe that we're a ransom redeemed remnant of men and women that are not just interested in a fire escape, that they're not just interested, well, in the man upstairs, but they want to know God. They want to walk with him, talk with him. They want to serve him. They become addicted to the ministry of the saint. That's a very good scripture. I have become addicted to the ministry, to the saints. And when this begins to happen, this is the high calling that you begin to find there's a tribe that's looking for you. There, there are those that are of like nature and like ability. And when you meet them, there is a frequency, there is a vibration, whatever you want to call it. Suddenly, you know one another by the Spirit. Has that ever happened to you? Suddenly, you'd just be listening to someone teach, 
and you just feel like I've known this person forever, and you find that you follow that person, you hear them, you know what they're talking about. I asked my granddaughter one day, she was dating this young man, he was studying to be a doctor, and I said, what is it about him that you love so much? And she says, oh, Mimi, he gets me. I said, well, explain that to me in old people's terms. Tell me what that means. And she says, I don't have to explain everything to him. Just when I say something or when I want something or I desire something, he gets what I need. I don't have to explain everything. And I got to thinking about people that you just, they, you can say, hello, how are you? And they want to know what you mean by it. There are some people, they do not understand your innuendos. They don't understand your frequency. But Paul is saying, hey, I have fallen madly in love with God. I just want to serve him. He was serving God ritualistic as far as the synagogue was concerned. But when he met Jesus, he moved into a, a relationship. You and I, we have the potential of an incredible relationship where the Lord is saying, don't stop at door one or door two. Come to the third door. Come and understand that the more excellent things with God are always in three. You begin to study God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You begin to realize you're made in His image and in His likeness, that you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. You begin to find out about the feast days of Israel, how God commanded you to do it because He said, I want you to understand about salvation, sanctification, and glorification. What is glorification? We know that salvation has to do with being redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. We understand that's a reinvent. That's certainly reinvent. We who are the poor banished children of Eve and that under the curse of Adam, you know, just suddenly we have an understanding Jesus is the son of God. I remember from the scripture where Jesus was talking and he asked Peter, he said, hey, Pete, who do men say that I am? And he said, well, some think you're John the Baptist, and some think you're Elijah, and some think this. And he said, now they're talking. They're just, they're friends. They walk together. It's not, oh, holy Jesus, we walk with you, and we honor you. There is a love relationship going on. And he says, well, Pete, who do you say that I am? He said, oh, man, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Scripture says, and Jesus being exceedingly filled, with the Holy Spirit, he began to spin around under the influence of a violent emotion. That's what it, that's what it meant. If you take the word, do a little word study, he begins to dance. To rejoice means to spin around under the influence of a violent emotion. And those of you who may be listening today and say, well, I'm just not an emotional person. I want you to know we're talking about a love affair. And if you take all the, all the emotion out of a love affair, there'll be no motion at all. It'll just be ritualistic. It'll just be religion. But we are finding out, reinvent yourself. Ultimately, the reinvention is that you have been called to be a companion of like nature and ability. You have been created to rule and reign in this life and throughout eternity. What a calling, what an election. And we begin to study the Word of God, talk about reinvent, reinvent. He taketh away the old to establish the new. You know why he does that? Because you won't give it up. He just comes and takes it away and says, look, you don't need that anymore. I'm going to show you a more excellent way. I'm going to show you how to walk by faith. I'm going to talk to you about the divine love. And you begin to say, well, Lord, when you, when you tell me that I have got to pursue you, in order for me to be reinvented, these are the steps that we're going. To be sanctified simply means to be set aside for the express purposes of God. And then, of course, when you begin to study the Old Testament in regard to the, the feast of Israel that are so important for us to understand, and you come to the place where you understand there is salvation, sanctification, and glorification. And what is glorification? That is where you are completely, absolutely identified with God the Father. 
That's an amazing, wonderful time. So reinvention is right here before us. Don't think that you've got it all and that you don't need any more of God. Yes, we do. Each day, we need that infilling of the power of wisdom and knowledge that he is taking us from glory to glory. Listen to what Isaiah said in Isaiah 43, 18, 19. What are we talking about? We are positioning ourselves to be apprehended for the purposes that God says, this is the reason I called you. This is the reason I called you. I called you to go beyond salvation. I called you to go beyond the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I called you to come into glory where you're not need-oriented and man-centered and entertainment-based. I've called you to walk like, talk like, think like, act like Jesus. You say, well, as long as I'm still seeing condemnation as as long as I still have fear and dread and doubt, then we need more reinvention. We need our brains washed by the Word of God, be transformed or metamorphosed through the washing of the Word of God. That's what Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember what we're talking about? Change, change, change. The greater the change, the greater the reward. Reinvent. Remember ye not the former things. Quit talking about the good old days. You know, when you say, oh, I remember when we did this and we did that. Yippee-ki-yay. That was a wonderful time. But you know what? Move on. Move on from that. And you cannot just stay. There's nothing sadder than faded glory. My husband and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and realized God had called us to pastor. We... I mean, if there'd been a premium on ignorance, we'd have had a, a trophy. But the reality was, if God calls, God equips. And for 38 years, we pastored this church. We thought, well, this is what we're going to do all of our life. This is where this is where we're going to be. This is what I'm a church lady, and I'm going to always be a church lady. And this is the way it's going to be. I, I look at my age. I'm not going to go out and do anything super duper. I'm just going to be steady. I'm going to take care of the sheep. And I had it all planned out. You go ahead and plan it all out in your mind what you're going to do. But when the Lord says, now, come up here, I've got something for you. Quit thinking about the old things. I want to do something with you that's never been done before. Neither consider the things of old. Don't even be considering it's going to mess you up. Because you're going to think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, if I, if I try to go do this or if I try to do that, then I'm forsaking my calling. Then condemnation comes. You cannot be walking in a reinvented status if you're full of doubt and fear and thinking that you're offending God by responding to his invitation. Come up here. Come up here. Ascend on wings of worship and praise. See me, saith the ancient of days. Understand that righteousness is a gift, that Jesus has covered you over with robes of righteousness, and he has made you so righteous that every time I look at you, all I can see is Jesus. I never heard anybody tell me that. I'm telling you what, when the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about that and say, you have to, you have to embrace reinvention. You cannot think of yourself as a sinner and also as a saint. You may sin, but you're not a sinner. You have a new nature. Do you hear what I'm saying right now? Oh, reinvention. He says, behold, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. What does spring mean? Boom, like that. Suddenly, you're going in one direction. You're thinking, oh, my goodness. We look around the world. We see such terrible things going on, and we want to talk about how terrible things are. I'm telling you, they're not terrible. Everything is getting in in place to be reinvented. Everything is being turned around. I was listening to this man teach the other night, and he says, we have now invented a hamburger machine. This hamburger machine can work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and it can make 3,000 hamburgers a day. It doesn't take, I think it was $2.17 an hour to run one and that it doesn't have any problems. It doesn't miss a day. It doesn't catch a cold. It certainly doesn't get COVID. It doesn't have any kind of problem. If it needs a, a repairman, they can call and do it. But they said these things are going to go in, and there won't be any need for anybody to make. <laughs> Don't get nervous if you're a hamburger maker. You just need to equip yourself to say, whoa, wait a minute. I've got to find out something that's going on. I've got to reinvent myself. That's why most of us, you know, that have been through the 
the, the pandemic. We've had a couple of years that we just had to stay at home and say, nah, 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 I want it like it was in the good old days. It's not ever going to be like that. So don't say that anymore. God says, this is the time, this is the season to reinvent yourself. He says, look, I will even make a way in the wilderness and I will put rivers in the desert. Reinvention. What God wants to do in your life comes from an immediate life shift. Things change. Now, here it is. We've got, the Lord says, you can't pastor anymore. That season is over. And I'm thinking, how do, where do I go from here? And at that time, I'm, I'm in my 70s. What, what's open for me? I can't go there. So now I've come to the place where I have to embrace change. It's not easy. The older you are, the more challenging it is. But you know what? God will give you grace. God will give people around you. And so just at the time that you're thinking, well, I'm going to go out on the road and I'm going to preach and teach and pray and do this and do that. I'll write books. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'm thinking of things that are going to be different than pastoring for 39 years. I'm going to do something I've never done before. It has nothing to do with pastoring. Get ready because Dr. Clarice Fluid is dedicated to teaching you how to create a partnership between your words and your faith. She wants to inspire you, mentor you, equip you to live up to your best self, no matter who you are. Visit ClariceFluid.org to find all the customized mentoring resources and coaching tools you'll ever need to be empowered in reaching your highest goals and dreams. You'll find all of her great books there. In Rescript Your Future, you'll find power-packed proclamations for your life, business, and government that will show you how the words you speak can take you from where you are presently to where you'd like to be. Change your words and you can change the trajectory of your life. It's time to get unstuck and move into the manifestation of answered prayers. Dr. Clarice invites you to join her in her live interactive teleconferences at clarissefluid.org where she will personally teach you how to shift your circumstances into a position of favor. Go now to clarissefluid.org. Get ready because Dr. Clarice Fluid is dedicated to motivating and igniting you in your daily life to walk with Jesus. She wants to inspire you, mentor you, and equip you to live up to your best self no matter who you are. Visit ClariceFluid.org to find all the customized mentoring resources and coaching tools you'll ever need to be empowered in reaching all of your highest goals and dreams. These programs will change the way you see yourself, teach you how to be set free from all the hindrances that prevent you from finding victory, and transport you into the life God wants you to have. Don't wait. Visit ClariceFluid.org right now and open your portal into your new life. Get access to exciting mentoring and coaching programs, free online inspirational videos, webinars, and much more that Dr. Clarice has created just for you. Find it all at clarissefluid.org. What I have had to learn is that all of our gifts, talents, and abilities, as wonderful as they might be, and that God is saying, come, let us do something we've never done before. I found out life has potential. Life has potential and potential has shelf life. So if you desire the benefit, here we go, where God is saying, now, when I was in the church and I was a pastor, oh my goodness, we were very, very successful, did wonderful things. You know, the Lord put it upon my heart. He said, write a musical and we involved 300 people in it. It was very successful. People got saved, people got healed, people got delivered. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to be writing plays and I'm going to be doing this Christian work and we'll do movies and da, 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 da. And I went to bed that night. And around 2 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I said, Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for bringing us through. It was nine months of rehearsal and what all that we had learned and would come together like I just, everybody was in agreement. And the Lord said, I want you to leave town. I want, next week, I'm going to put you on the road. I don't want you coming back here. And he says, you take everything that had, that you, all the sets that you built where you spent thousands and thousands of dollars. He says, I want you to give everything away and anything that's left, I want you to burn it because you're never going back this way. You're never going to do this again. And I thought, 
well, what in the world am I going to do? I said, Lord, I, I've been here at church for uh, the past seven years, and, and I don't know anybody. I don't go out. He says, I know people. Just get rid of the stuff. You're not going back. This is a reinvention. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe, you know, I just felt like all of my work was for nothing. But you know what? The fear of God will get you moving. And somebody called me. And they said, we're doing a conference, and we want to know if you would just come and be our guest speaker. Well, of course I will. I got a word from God last night that that's what I'm going to be doing. And for the next five years, I was on the road. I was on the road. And then uh, my husband, he says, it's time for us. We, we're extending and expanding. We're going to buy uh, new property, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And the Lord says, it's time to go home. I went home, and then everything was different than it was when I left. And then you have to reinvent. You have to re-meet people. You have to find out where you belong in the midst of this. You know, somebody told me a story once about they were doing a, this, this actually took place where they took a group of monkeys and they put them in a cage and at the top of the cage they put bananas. Now, you know, monkeys and bananas, they just love each other so wonderful. And the little monkeys immediately would reach where they would run up to get them up a banana. But what they did, what the people were doing the test, they would spray the monkeys with water and it would cause them to go down and leave the bananas alone because the water was a deterrent. They were being regrouped. They were being reinvented. And so the next thing that happened, they brought a fresh monkey in that had never had water sprayed on him. And he saw the banana and man, that's what monkeys are made for, bananas. He scurried up and he started to reach for them. They didn't spray him with water. He didn't have the same restraint that the other monkeys had. But you know what? Tradition. The tradition had been established. You can't have the, you can't have the banana. I don't care. It's made for you. You want it. Your vision is like this. There is a vision that God said, come on up here. And there's always those that want to rain on your parade. I'm telling you for sure, do not get in the company of people that want to keep you in yesterday's understanding. You've got to change. You've got to embrace change. There's a difference between pioneers and settlers. I believe that if you're listening today to Wisdom for Success, that you're not a settler. You are a pioneer, and something in you has heard there's gold in our hills. I am reaching in to the goodness of God, coming to a place and say, Lord, take me like I am. Build in me a heart that causes the, the joy of the Lord to be released. Father, in the authority of the name of Jesus, upon each and every individual right now that is listening, Lord, that there be a, a passion that will be released to them to say, oh God, here am I, take me. I want to be a part of the restoration that you're doing in the earth. Reinvent in within me that pioneering spirit that says, yes, I know there's more to salvation than just eat, sleep, reproduce, and die. I know there's more to the kingdom of God. I know that there are some things that I have believed that are erroneous. I know that, I know it. So put me in contact with truth. Lord, align me. Give me an assignment that causes me to put myself in alignment with people of like nature and like ability. Oh my goodness, this is where the Spirit of the Lord is saying to each and every one of us, your tradition can make the Word of God to absolutely no effect, but you are people making choices. You didn't just happen on this program. The Lord planned it so that you could say, wait a minute, somebody besides me is thinking that. Somebody realizes I've got to be reinvented. I cannot just continue to do the same thing all the time and say, this is what God wants for me. God wants you. He wants you to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, preach good news. He wants you to stand in the stead of Christ. He said, well, you're always saying that, and I'm going to always keep saying it because I know that it's true. I know that it is the Word of God that's being released. Your reinvention demands that you embrace transition, and transition is progressive. Transition is progressive, line upon line, precept upon precept, a little bit here, a little bit there. You are making a decision. 
somebody would say to me, oh, we went to this meeting and they had 300 decisions made for the Lord. And I said, oh, and I realized a decision's not a conversion. I can decide to lose 20 pounds. I can decide to clean out my closet. I can decide to do all kinds of things just because I've decided a decision is no more than just a happy wish. But unless you make a decision, unless you choose and say, Lord God, I desire to be a part of the restoration. I desire not to be talking against the things that are going on. I don't want to speak against the church. I don't want to speak against Christians. I don't want to say they didn't do this or they should have done that. Don't do that. You want to release life. You want to release joy. You want to release love. It's a decision, but a decision is not a conversion. You've got to say, this is what I'm going to do with my mouth. I'm going to reinvent myself from the inside out. I'm going to give myself to more prayer. I'm going to give myself to more study. I'm going to give myself to people that are positive. I'm going to begin to find that, that wonderful elite group of men and women that says, whatever you say, Lord, I simply say yes. How does that feel in the depths of your being when you begin to say, Lord God, I just thank you. I'm gonna showcase the character. I'm gonna showcase the wonderful patience and the integrity during my reinvention. I'm not gonna complain and find fault and murmur and do all these negative things that immature people do. I'm going to go beyond salvation. I'm going to go beyond sanctification. I'm going to move into a place that I have come before God the Father, and I'm going to say, Lord God, here am I. I choose to put my faith in the plan of God. I choose to build up, not tear down. I choose by an act of my will to be able to say with my mouth and believe in my heart, Lord, whatever you say, I say yes. Whatever you say, I say yes. It may be different than what I've been told before, but I remember the night I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'd never in my life heard anybody say, just open your mouth and babble like a baby. And I thought, these are the craziest people I've ever seen in my life. I had never seen that, never heard that. But you know what? I opened myself. It was scary. It was scary, but it reinvented me. It took me from being need-oriented and man-centered and entertainment-based and just wondering what's going on. It took me to another dimension. That's my prayer for you today, that you will be moved by the spirit of grace, the spirit of God saying, come here, come my beloved, come and join me. And we are going to move into realizing, realizing that you have been created to be a part of the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The Word of God has the power to perform itself. You are a word from the heart and the mouth of God. You are a God idea. You are a winner. You, you are blessed. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching Wisdom for Success with Dr. Clarice Fluitt, your supernatural life coach. Visit ClariceFluitt.org to find Dr. Clarice's many books and teachings or join her for a coaching and mentoring session and step into your best life. Follow Dr. Clarice on social media to keep up to date with her and to be inspired daily. And join Dr. Clarice next week for your wisdom for success.